with our home video, Neat Stuff to Make for Kids, or with Kids, and you may find that that's really part of it. But these instructional tapes are kind of nifty, I think, because it gives me a chance to take everything step by step by step, and you, of course, have the opportunity to push the button, to stop, to start, to rewind, to fast forward, to get to where you want to, and to learn what you need to know. I've had a great time putting all these neat things together, and I hope you'll have just as much fun as I have. Project coming up, our geodesic dome playhouse, one of my all-time favorite projects. I felt so smug and clever. Got the idea for it in a catalog, priced at $54.95. Made this one for the chenille stems less than $4. Besides, the kids love it. Want to make one like it? Here's what you'll need. You'll need some big sheets of corrugated cardboard, a couple of refrigerator, and a couple of stove cartons will do it. You need two pieces of poster board, the big size, a craft knife, yardstick, pencil or pen, an ice pick or knitting needle for poking holes, about a hundred chenille stems or clip clothespins. If you want to paint it, fine, paint in a paintbrush or cover it with contact paper. Well, let me explain that list of materials. You do not have to go out and buy a refrigerator or a stove or two of them. What you do need to be able to do, though, is scrounge or beg, uh, which is what I did, uh, both. Um, go to your uh, local appliance store, your local furniture store, and ask if they would please save for you or give to you some of their old cartons that hold refrigerators, stoves, television sets, or I lucked out, really, I got two mattress boxes. Um, that's what you need, because you need great, huge pieces of corrugated cardboard, and getting it this way, you not only get it, but you get it for free. Now, how to get it home? Well, when you go, go with either a good craft knife, or in this case, this is a serrated knife. It worked beautifully. And I just stood out in the alleys and uh, did this, flattened the thing up and stuck it in the back of my little tiny car and got them home just fine. Okay. Now, you're going to cut those into individual pieces for the sections for your dome, but not yet. First, we want to make the patterns. Okay, you've got the little patterns uh, in with your tape. One for a hexagon, one for a pentagon. If you remember your high school geometry, that's five-sided and six-sided figures. We didn't want you to have to bother figuring out how to draw them, so we had them. Now, you take one of those pieces of poster board, cut out the hexagon, and tape it right smack in the middle of the poster board. Then take your yardstick. You can use a regular ruler, but you have to draw a long line, so it's easier with the yardstick. And simply extend those lines that are already in your pattern with a black marking pen or a pen that you can really see all the way, as I have done here. Do that on every single one of them. Now you go back and measure, and from the dot in the center, on each line, you measure out exactly 12 and a half inches, and put a dot on this one, 12 and a half inches, dots all the way around, and then you connect all those dots, and each line that joins the dots should measure exactly 12 and a half inches. So much for the hexagon. Now you do the same basic thing with the pentagon, except that your measurements are a little different. And that is when you extend these lines, you extend them 10 and 5 eighths inches to your dots. Now this, these measurements, incidentally, are for making our big um, three feet high, five foot wide dome. You can make them smaller, make a smaller dome. We'll show you that too. But anyway, this is, this is for our biggie. 10 and 5 eighths inches. Then between the dots, these will all again measure 12 and a half inches. It doesn't make any difference how big or small you make it, but the sides of both the hexagon and the pentagon must match because, you see, this is how they're going to go together. So when they're butted up together, they have to be perfect. Well, obviously, this is the next step. You cut them out, but this is only your pattern. So you place one of these on one of your big pieces of corrugated cardboard. Not at the edge, not like this to save, but right in the middle because we're not finished yet. Now you take, after you've drawn around it, now you take your yardstick, and I use this measurement uh, simply because it's, it's easier than, than measuring, actually measuring. Whatever the width of my yardstick is, that's how wide these lines are. If you have a wider um, than this yardstick, that's okay too. Because these are going to be the flaps that we're going to connect all the different pieces with. Well, anyway, you do that all the way around on every piece, the hexagon and the pentagon. Now we're going back. Get these out of the way so it doesn't look. All right. 
and we're going to score along all those drawn lines, but not yet, because we're going to cut out the corners, and we want these corners, not along those lines. Draw a line at a right angle. This is the line you drew, and this is the right angle here, and this one too. This is the line you drew and a right angle. This is the part you cut out. And you can just cut that out with the scissors. You do that at every corner. All right, I have already done that on this piece here. Now you're going to go along and you're going to score along all these lines. If you've not scored before, not sure what that means, you put your yardstick or your ruler along there and you take your craft knife, your razor bladed knife, whatever, and you cut into the cardboard enough to break it but not all the way through. Reason for that is we want to make a nice, crisp fold. So this means, see, this is the way it's going to go. This part that you've been doing all your drawing on is the inside of the dome. So if you have a carton that says, you know, a refrigerator, stove, or whatever on it, if you want all the printing on the outside, fine. Then this is it. But if you want the printing on the inside where it's not seen, remember, that's the side you do all your drawing, your scoring, and everything on. Okay, now we have all our big pieces. Obviously, it's a little humongous for me to do it right here. So now we have some miniature pieces to put it together. That part is boring. This part is fun. And the boring part's worth it because of all the fun. For our first row, to put their dome together, now you're going to think, oh, I can't figure that. It's so simple. It's so simple. You're going to need five of our hexagons, and then you're going to take three of them and you're going to cut them in half. So you'll have six pieces like this. And our first row consists of five of these and three of these. So we're going to line these up. Now you've got, I've got little holes poked here. Yes, an ice pick will do that carefully. That's not for the kids to help you with. Poke holes, because that's how we're going to join them. This way. So you can do it with clip clothespins, but let me show you how we go. Okay. So we're going to take five. Here's what it's going to look like. Only, of course, much, much larger. Allow yourself plenty of space. It'll fill the living room when you do this. Okay. One, two, three, four, five are the big ones. One, two, three, four, five halves. Now, it's going to seem, we've joined them all, as I say, with our little chenille stems. Now, it's going to seem logical to bring it together like this. But remember, I said those flaps go on the outside. So it goes like this. Bring it around. And with, put your little chenille stem right through. Now, I've left the bottom flaps on these. Obviously, you can uh, cut them off if you would like to. But uh, that's the matter of choice. By this time, you may be so tired of cutting. <laughs> You don't want to bother with that. I'll just put this through one of these holes, give um, sets of holes. Now, this is, this is the part that the kids can do. And believe me, they think it's kind of nifty because they can watch it grow right before their very eyes. Anyway, this is what you do. You join them like this and give them a twist. Now, I'm not going to, you know, be specific and do that, both of them. You get the idea. All right. This is when you're working with your big one. Now, you see? You can see right there. You don't have to remember where anything goes. You can see right there. This is where our pentagons fit in all the way around. And you've got all those little openings, see? So we have five of those that go around in this row. And when you get those all joined, the kids do it for you. Now it looks like this. <laughs> there you go again. It's very obvious what goes next. Now, <laughs> now we go back and we do these and fit those in all the way around. And the only thing that's left is a little tiny hole in the top to put in that very last pentagon. By the way, this is the greatest project to make for your grandkids. My kids thought I was so wonderful. This is not a grandmother kind of a thing, but they thought it was great. It's also a nice project for the scouts to work on, the Cub Scouts to work on, and, uh, or for a group of you to make for the nursery school or the church Sunday school, whatever. Anyway, uh, the thing is fine, but there isn't any door in it. So here, we put a door in. And all we did was on one of the pieces, on one of the hexagons, cut uh, a circle almost and then scored a straight line. Now remember, you fold away from the scored line. So the scored line, if you want the door to open out, is on the inside. The same side that you score these things on, you also score for the door. And then they can crawl in there. Now there's only one thing lacking as far as I'm concerned, and that's some, you know, light. Windows. You could cut out nice windows and put wax paper over them, which I think sounds very logical, but then that's because I'm an adult. The kids want it dark, 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 and they don't want windows. Well, that's something you worry about between the two of you. Figure that out. At any rate, this is really fun to make. 
Okay, and here is our completed dome. And you see it's very wonderfully colorful. I had a lot of poster paint around, and the kids did the painting. That was kind of fun, too. Now for my little three-year-old nephew, who's not quite so big and rambunctious, a smaller version. And this one, we just covered with contact. It was a lot quicker than painting. I, th I think these domes are just terrific. They're inexpensive, they're easy to make, and the kids just love them. <laughs> you don't have to be a kid to enjoy looking through a kaleidoscope. They even had them for, what? $200 in the, in the catalogs these days. The one we're going to make costs, oh, maybe pushing it 50 cents. Easy to make, fun to use for you or the kids. Here's what you'll need. One Pringles potato chip can, three strips of plexiglass, one eighth of an inch thick, two and three eighths inches wide, nine and one quarter inches long. Then you'll need three pieces of black construction paper, same size, some plexiglass scraps, Plastic circle, two and three quarter inches in diameter. A strip of medium weight cardboard, three eighths inches wide, nine inches long. You'll need a nail or an ice pick, a hammer, scissors, and some wire cutters. Then optional, one three by 13 inch piece of cardboard and some contact paper. Sounded like a lot of materials, but they're really all very easy to come by. And you can make these kaleidoscopes in different cans besides this one, but we did all the measuring for you. You'll have to figure it out yourself if you use something else. First thing we're going to do is what should really come last, and that's going to decorate it. Cover up our can, um, and I'm going to do this with um, some contact paper. It's easier to do ahead of time. I'm not going to peel it, though, because it's hard to get it on so it looks really, really nice and smooth because the, uh, the can is ribbed. So I just uh, sort of scored along here, and I'm pulling off just about an inch worth, and that's the part that'll overlap. It's really easy to do this. Cut it so that it comes right in between those ends. Then you can roll it around and seal it. Much easier, right? Okay, now we'll start making. We're gonna turn the can upside down, and we're gonna poke a hole in the end. For this, I'm using a nail. If you have an ice pick or even know what an ice pick is, you can use that. Okay. Now I'm going to use my scissors uh, if I can find them. Here we go. All right. Keeping the blade closed, put it in. And you might want to use bigger scissors than this, but uh, this seems to work all right. Now we're making the hole. Uh, we're not wrecking the scissors because the blades are closed. And the thing is, the metal is going down inside, so there are no sharp edges on the outside that are going to cut you. If you want to cover this up, you know, make it fancy and look really nice, you can cut just a little piece of cardboard to fit and cover that with contact as well. Might as well do that while we're right here. Oh, by the way, we're going to have to cut some circles, too, that go inside. So let me show you how I measure, because if you draw around the can, the circle's going to be too big. So what I usually do is simply take a piece of paper, lightweight paper, typing paper, whatever, and run around with my fingernail on the inside, make an indentation, then draw and cut around there, and then you have a circle that'll fit inside for whatever project you're making like that. Okay, now we're going to go to the other end. Now, ordinarily, you think of mirrors in kaleidoscopes. Well, we're not using mirrors at all. We're going right over to the hardware store and getting some plexiglass. We gave you the size of these strips. I figured that out. I don't know how, but I did. Um, you can cut this yourself. It's very easy to cut plexiglass. It really is much easier than glass, or they'll cut it for you. Plexiglass, the, the uh, eighth of an inch thickness, I paid a dollar and a half, a dollar and a half a square foot, so you can see they're not too expensive. These are the plexiglass cutters. This is a cheap kind. If you're going to be making many, buy one that costs $5. This is only a dollar. Anyway, easy way is to have them cut it for you. And you get these three strips. And don't worry, I'll tip it over so you can see what I'm doing. And get two of them in here like this. And then the third one, sorry, I have got to look. Get it there, like so. And they hold themselves right together because they fit so perfectly piece of construction paper in back of them, and that will now make it a reflective surface. That's why we can use these instead of the mirrors. Now, incidentally, if you're using this as, say, a Cub Scout project for the kids to make, and this is a good one for that, you might not want to go to the expense of the bother of the plexiglass. You can use some of this lightweight plastic or acetate. You can um, buy this, buy the sheet in art supply stores. You can also buy it in different weights like this. 
at the hardware store, uh, Flexiglass is the brand name I use. Anyway, they use it to cover up uh, your windows, you know, to make your quick storm windows in the wintertime. Now, because this isn't stiff as the plexiglass is, then you'll need some black cardboard to go in back of it to keep it stiff in there, or a piece of regular cardboard and a black construction paper to give this effect. That's the main thing. Okay, so that's the easy, inexpensive way if the kids are doing this, and you don't have to worry about cutting that all up. All right, now, we've got this in. We want to hold it in place. So that strip of cardboard we told you to cut, the narrow one, not quite a half an inch thick, is what goes in here, and just big enough to go around. But before we put that in, we're going to put in a little circle of plastic, the same kind of plastic we use there. This is cut so it will just fit inside. We measured it the way I showed you. If you can't get this acetate or heavy plastic, you can cut up the side of a, of a milk carton and use that. This will work. It really will. Okay, now we're going to put in our little strip of cardboard, which will hold everything together. And now comes the fun part, putting the things in that are going to look so pretty. Now, you can use beads, small small beads, colorful glass beads, and any kind of whatever you might find. I use more plexiglass. When you get the plexiglass at the hardware store, ask them for some scraps. They always have them. They'd be glad to give them to you. They don't come like this, of course. You color them, or the kids do, with uh, magic markers, permanent ink marking pens, all wonderful colors. And then break them into pieces. You can't shatter this like you do glass uh, by hammering it. You really do need a wire cutter. We just cut off little chunks, but little chunks, little chunks, and put bunches of them. Of course, if you have any glass beads, you can use those too. Put bunches of them in there, then back, but not so many that they're going to uh, you know, uh, touch the lid when you close it because they've got to be able to fall freely. Okay? And then you look through it and turn it around. But if you want to put a cuff on it, like we had on this one, so it makes it very, very professional looking, this again can be done by just cutting a strip of cardboard long enough to go around with a little bit of overlap. Peel a piece of, cut the contact paper a little bit larger and cut the ends, the corners in. Fold this back. Fold this in, fold this in, and wrap this around. Now, don't real tight. Tight enough to hold, but so it won't slip off. Loose enough so that you can. There. Okay, let's see. Oh, my gosh. It's gorgeous. <gasps> You've got to give it a try. Our tape is called Neat Stuff to Make for Kids, but you don't have to be a kid to enjoy teddy bears. You can make them for your grown-up friends, too. And even though these were all made from the same pattern, they all have different looks, they're different sizes, even different colors, we're going to make a teddy bear teddy bear. And here's what you'll need to make one. Two 12-inch squares of fake fur, some small pieces of felt for the face, black marking pen, or a needle with black thread to draw the face, polyfill stuffing, scissors, and a sewing machine if you have one, otherwise needle and thread. Now optional, needle nose pliers, wire cutter, 16 gauge galvanized wire, and some ribbon. Okay, this is one of what I refer to as my sewing project for non-sewers. Um, oh, I made it on a sewing machine all right, although you can do it by hand, but I sort of um, make it up as I go along. It works, and you can make those awful cute teddy bears. This is a very simple way. Now, you have a pattern in the box that your tape came in, and you can make a little teddy like this with the pattern that you received. But if you'd like to make a bigger teddy, take the pattern down to your nearest office store, the post office, or wherever they happen to have a copy machine, and enlarge the pattern. And that's what we're going to do right here. The amount of fabric, of course, the pieces that you want, you want two of them, cut so that they're just a little bit bigger than, than the teddy bear and pin them to the top layer. You want two of them, of course. Pin them to the top layer and then trace around. We've done it with a dark, dark, dark pin so that you can see. And that dotted line down the middle, be sure and draw that in. And after you've drawn it, then you're going to cut it. Mm -hmm. Give the kid an operation right there. Now, put your two pieces back together again with the right sides facing, pin them together, and sew all the way around. As I mentioned, some of our teddy bears were stitched by hand, but if you have a sewing machine, certainly it's a lot easier, especially on the, on the big sides like this. Ordinarily, when you're making something that you're going to turn right side to, you leave a portion of it unstitched so that you can turn it right side to through that. Then you have to fold it in and hand close it. That's why I do this. I think it's much easier this way. And with the fur fabric, it isn't going to show. 
Now, we've stitched this in black so that you can see it. You would, of course, stitch it in pink or, or maybe even white. But you sew all the way around. You do not leave any unstitched areas. And when it has been stitched, then you go and you cut it out. Oh, a quarter of an inch to a half an inch, about a quarter of an inch, all the way around. And be sure you take your scissors and slash, slash, slash around all the curves so that it'll give a nice smooth curve when you turn it right side to. And then all the indentations like this slash in almost all the way to the stitching line. Now, that's what we use, as I mentioned, for turning it. Even, even with that nice, great big slash there, it's still going to take a little bit of work to turn that whole teddy through that hole. But I do think it's a lot easier. And then when it's turned, you don't have to worry about being so careful when you close that up again. See, we're coming through like that. Okay, we get the whole teddy all the way turned around. Now, of course, before you stitch him up, you're going to want to stuff him. And we use lots of this nice polyfill stuffing for that. The extremities first, his, his paws, his ears, his face, and then his body. And it's up to you, of course, how squishy or how solid you want him to be. If you want him real solid, you really, really, really pack it in and make it like this little guy here. And when he is stuffed to your satisfaction, then you hand sew his operation closed. See, you can hardly see the scar there at all. The next thing, of course, is to put on the face. Now, that's up to you whether you put on real eyes, uh, things that you buy at the store. Ours are just felt. Now, let me show you something about this. Our little nose and our eyes are dark brown felt. You put them up like this. You put them down like this. Now, that's cute. That's cute. Funny. I mean, there's no way to make a teddy bear that's not cute. But... If you put the eyes almost even with the nose, I'm doing this upside down, I can't tell, but I'm guessing from my placement, almost even with the nose, that that's probably about the cutest face. Then stitch it on very carefully and very, very thoroughly so that little ones aren't going to pull those off and get them in their mouth. Now, there's one other thing that you can do. Notice what our teddy here does. You can bend him, and he'll stay where you bend him. That's because going back before he was completely stuffed, we put some wire in here. Now, this is just very flexible wire. You can buy it like this in the reel at the hardware store and cut a length of it just long enough to go right across here. And then notice I bend a little hook on there so that you don't have the wire pointing out just to round it off. Put some stuffing in either end, curve this, then put it in and then you can straighten it out. And you can do the same thing for the arms, as I call a teddy bear's arms. All right, now more stuffing, of course, then sew it up. And then it will do this. Again, of course, I wouldn't recommend that if you're making this for an 18-month-old or a 2-year-old or even a 3-year-old. But for the little older ones, it's just like a nice little teddy bear. The wire does make it kind of cute. So you see, you can make yourself a cute little teddy bear like this. And incidentally, this is embroidery. Or you can enlarge that pattern and make a cute little teddy bear like this. You can do whatever you like. They're all cute, and they're all easy. Well, this uh, Neat Stuff for Kids project started out as just a squishy little toy for a little tiny baby. But like Topsy, it sort of grew and ended up being toys for kids for all ages and a sit-upon for the bigger ones and even a special item for mom. Now, if you want to make one or a dozen of these cubes, here's what you'll need. For each cube, you will need some cotton broadcloth, polyfill stuffing, needle and thread, sewing machine, if you have one, lightweight cardboard, a pencil, scissors, and a ruler. Okay, really, once I got started making these things, it was like eating peanuts. I didn't want to stop, and I, I don't even have kids to give all these things to. But they make nice little gifts for uh, baby showers or for little birthday parties. It started when I bought this one in a gift store for, for a, a youngster's squish toy gift, three and a half dollars. And the first one I made was this one out of like a t-shirt material, soft and squishy for a little baby. And then I wrote <laughs> all the others. Here's what I did. Decided just arbitrarily that I would make three-inch size cubes. So I cut a three-inch square of cardboard for my pattern. And you would take a piece of fabric. You're going to need six of these, six squares for every cube you make. So I'd probably be able to get six out of this one and draw around it. Then for whatever hem you want, I decided, oh, about a quarter of an inch hem would be just fine. 
So I cut a piece of cardboard just that much smaller and put it right in here. Now you don't really need to measure. Try and center it as best your eye will tell you and draw around it. Now you wouldn't use a, an ink pen as I'm using. Use a pencil. You just want it as a guideline, not so it's going to go through. Anyway, do the whole. Do six of them. All of one color, different colors. And then cut them out. Now we start the sewing by hand or if you're fortunate and have a machine, fine, on the machine. Line the two of them up with the drawn sides outside, clean sides inside, and then sew along one edge and sew from corner to corner, not all the way to the edge of the fabric, corner to corner, so that you have two pieces like this. Now you take a third one, and you could eat wherever you want to put it, you want to join it anyway, like this, line them up, and again, sew corner to corner, right down to there. So it'd be like this. Another one on this side or on this side. At any rate, you're going to end up with six of them, corner to corner. Now about this time, you're going to be saying, oh my gosh, if I look so on this side and look on this side, they don't match. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Believe me, they're going to turn out. <laughs> I didn't think so, but they would. So this is what you end up with. One, two, three across. And actually, we have four down, but of course, this is the same square in the center. If you need help on that one, this is how they're going to go together. Up like this to make our cube. And this is what we're going to do with these. We're going to fold the two sides down here, any two sides, adjacent sides, of course. And again, stitch corner to corner. Do it all the way around, corner to corner, until you have all of them together except one. That one you leave open. So, uh oh, before you do that, take a scissors and cut these off at an angle, just to neaten it up so that you're going to be able to get uh, a nicer, uh, sharper corner when you actually do turn it right side to. So cut at an angle there and there at each corner, except the ones that aren't yet stitched. Now, turn it right side to, and it's ready for stuffing. I tried different things to stuff it with, too. Some of them I put little squares of cardboard along the edges so that they would be nice and sharp and straight they were for building blocks. But for the most part, just uh, filling them with polyfill stuffing is just fine. This nice squish stuff. And as I say, if you want them really squishy, you don't fill them too full. And if you want them uh, sturdier, then you, you, you put more in. Fold, of course, these edges in when it's all stuffed and hand stitch them together. So, uh, you know, I made a couple like this, really colorful and pretty. And then, um, then I made some more and I put Velcro on them and they can be attached together and they make nifty, oh, gotta put the right Velcro pieces together. They can make nifty pull apart, see? The kids have trouble with this one. No, they don't, do they do it better than I do. Okay, pull apart, pull apart, push together, push together. Put a face on the front, a tail on the back. You can make it just, you know, 20 of them long if you would like to. Then I made some more, and I stuffed them with unpopped popcorn or beans for great bean bags. And then I made another one for mother. Put a steel wool in there, and it makes a great pin cushion. Put the popcorn underneath. And then I got really carried away and made some 12-inch squares and made a wonderful sit-upon. This time, the outside square was 12 inches. The inside pattern was 11 and a half. I wanted a half-inch hem all the way around. Stitch a handle in just as you're closing up one of the corners like that and stuff it with shredded foam. That way when they sit upon it, it'll bounce back a little better than if it was polyfill batten. And if this is just a little too delicate in color for you, how about this wonderful one with the polka dots and all the vibrant ones? Any size, any color, they're so easy and they're such fun for so many ages. going to make neat stuff for the kids today, a puppet theater and some puppets. Tell them what they'll need, lady. You'll need one yard of 72 inch wide felt, one yard of 36 inch wide felt, miscellaneous felt for the trim, tape, masking tape and or electrical tape and or mystic tape and or duct tape, lots of tape, two 24 inch lengths of wood lattice, Two dowels, one half inch in diameter, two dowels, one quarter inch in diameter. Some white glue, some spray glue, twine or string, pen or pencil, a ruler, and some scissors. At some time in every child's life, they should have a puppet theater. 
And we've got one that is so easy to make. It'll sound complicated, but believe me, it's easy when you get to it. Uh, and I copied this idea from one I saw in a catalog. That one was $36.95. This one was under $12. That one was made of cotton, and it was stitched. Ours is made of felt, and it's taped and glued. In fact, you don't even need to glue it. It's every bit as colorful, and I think we made some things that make it even nicer. Here's how we did it. And I'm going to do it on a model so that you can not have me do it with felt all the way over this table. Felt usually comes 72 inches wide. So I bought one yard, but this is the way it's going. 36 inches across the top, 72 inches long. Fold over the top two inches of felt, and we're going to run some tape down there. Now, I ran masking tape, which is okay if you put a couple of layers of it, but we're going to put slashes in this, and we the tape is to sort of... Uh, um, not only kind of make the felt a little sturdier, but also to keep it from tearing. So if you have electrical tape or duct tape, wonderful, do that. Um, but two inch wide strip of it would be just fine. You don't have to tape it down, just tape it across there. Then about 25 inches down, I'm going to run another uh, row of tape. And we're also going to make some slashes in there, about 16 across this one and 16 across this one. Uh, they're little vertical uh, slashes, uh, just about an inch. Uh, along there, and I say 16 simply because it's a nice number, that's all. <laughs> Fold the, t the two side edges in now a couple of inches and tape that to hold. Again, this step isn't necessary. I only did it to just give a finished edge to the theater, that's all. You know, give us a little weight there too. So here we are with the two side edges taped in, tape here with a bunch of slashes and a bunch of slashes in this one. Now we're going to put that aside for a minute and we're going to go to what goes on the front of our theater. Proscenium arch. Okay, another piece of felt, this time in a bright color, yellow or gold or orange, uh, a piece 32 inches wide and 27 inches deep. Then inside of this, I drew a rectangle that is four inches from the bottom, four inches from each side. So it turns out that this is 24 inches and 16 inches. Now, I wanted to make a scallop thing. This is like the one I saw in the magazine. It looked kind of nice. So uh, I arbitrarily picked the figure five inches. And five inches down from the top on each side, I put a dot, and I put a dot in the center, drew a straight line between the dots, and then made scallops, cut scallops along there. And the way I would cut the scallops on, on our big theater is I took a, a sauce dish out of my kitchen cupboard and placed it there and drew around it to get nice scallops. Okay, so far so good. Now, turn the piece of felt over and lots of spray glue on it. Go back to our theater here and attach it to the background. Where? Well, about an inch in from each side. And that's how wide the piece is. It'll happen that way. And about two inches down from the um, bottom row of slashes, like this. Now, remember that rectangle we drew inside? We're going to cut on that. And this time, of course, it's glued to the background, so you're cutting through both layers of felt. Cut across, cut up the two sides and across the top, not the bottom. The two sides and across the top. This is going to get folded back like this. I'm going to turn our theater over here. We've added one more thing, or four more things, I should say, actually. A couple little strips of felt. Uh, that we just glued in place here. These are little loops, and they're just going to hold our dowels as we put them through. Now we're going to go to our miniature mock-up version, and you'll see exactly what I mean. Through all of these slashes, we put dowels. See, there's our tape and the dowels. Tape and a dowel. Now here's our little loop and a dowel. This is where this comes over. This is going to hold the dowel that's going to hold the curtain, but we're not ready to do that yet, so I'm going to just leave that. All right, now I'll show you the secret to make this whole thing work on your wall. And if you put it over a doorway, that's, that's, that's great. We mentioned in our list of materials that you'll need 30-inch um, lengths of lattice. You could even cut off a yardstick, or don't even cut off a yardstick. Use a yardstick, a couple of yardsticks if you want to. You need a length of wood. That's what these represent. I use lattice. And poke a hole, or drill a hole, in one end of each one. Then we're going to take a length of um, uh, string or twine, pull it through there. The other end, make a loop and put it over this dowel. Now there's 22 inches in length between this knot and here. It doesn't have to be 22 inches, it can be 20, it can be 23. The main thing is that between these two loops here 
and where it's attached to those pieces of wood, these should be the same length. That's the main thing, that they're the same length. Here's how it works. Now, on your doorway or over your doorway or on your wall, I hope you can put a couple of cup hooks someplace. If you can't, maybe a couple of little nails or tacks because we're going to fit our dowel, our top dowel, right in there. Because this is so lightweight, I'm going to uh, tape it. You won't have to do that, of course. Now, here's how the whole thing works, you see. When I practiced this, I just did it with a couple of yardsticks and an old sheet to see if it would work. Here's the string. It goes flat against the wall in that piece of lattice, or as I say, if you're improvising with the yardstick, goes like that. And the weight of the felt will hold those in place. Trust me, it will. On the little one, it's not always so sure here. Okay? So far, so good. Let's go over to our big one and see how it really does work. Grand, isn't it? All right, now, for our theater, see, this is the dowel. I told you went in there, and this is the, the curtain. All I did for the curtain was, again, fold some, some uh, the top of the felt over and taped it and just cut slashes. And, of course, when it's showtime, these just get pushed back. We don't have a, a, a draw a theater curtain there. The kids, uh, you, know, you can see the kids did this. They spilled a little glue around here, put our decoration on. You can do anything that you want to in the front. It's what's inside that's so wonderful. Well, here we are backstage, and there's room for a crowd. A crowd of little people, anyway. Okay, here's, here's what I was telling you. Now, there are the cup hooks holding up the doll. That's about um, the height of an average doorway, incidentally. And here's that 22-inch length of cord or twine tied through the hole in the end of the yardstick or the, the lattice piece, and it fits up right there under the doll. And, of course, one on the other side, too. You can see all the tape, and here's the doll with the little loops that holds the curtain. Now, here's something I didn't tell you about. Usually, when the kids are behind the proscenium arch, of course, they stand there, and they're seen by the public in front, or else they have to stand way down and hold their arms over their head. So I added this. Um, another piece of felt, uh, oh, long enough to come below the opening of the stage, of course, folded over with more slashes. And this is just a piece of wire, the kind that I got at the hardware store, and wove it in and out, in and out, bend it out, of course, like this, away from the stage a little bit, put a hook on each end, one hook at the over the dowel here and one hook over the dowel here. Then so it wouldn't fall down, another length of wire, with a hook at that end up over the dowel that's, you know, at the top of the thing, and the other one, a hook down here, and it holds it all up. And that's it, and it works perfectly marvelously, and everything's done except what's good, of course, is the pup theater without puppets. Oh, am I on? Am I on? Oh, hi there. Just a sock and a couple of ping-pong balls, and here I am, folks, ready for action. Howdy. Are these cute, or are these cute? Neat stuff to make for kids, my foot. I know quite a few adults would think these were quite wonderful. Now, at the end of the tape, we're going to give you information on how you can send for printed directions for all of these folks. But right now, this is the little guy we're going to show you how to make, and here's what you'll need. A Renews It adjustable air freshener with a white base, two and a half inch foam ball, 24 quarter inch pom-poms in red, blue, green, and yellow, three one and a half inch pom-poms in red, blue, green, and yellow, six one-inch red pom-poms, one one-half-inch red pom-pom, a 12-inch length of one-eighth of an inch wide blue satin ribbon, 12-inch length of red maxi-loop yarn, five-and-a-half-inch length of one-inch wide green box-pleated ruffle, one red and three white slim chenille stems, red, blue, and pink felt scraps, thick craft glue, serrated knife, and scissors, paper, and pencil. Well, this is when I get to take life easy because this wonderful little party man is the uh, creation of Cindy Groom Harry. The Cindy has made all these wonderful creations out of um, Renews It adjustable air freshener containers. That's right, and the wonderful thing about this particular project, Carol, is that it's very simple. It's great for doing with kids or for a group project with children. Or for people who just like to take life easy, like <laughs> me. I want to watch. That's true. Well, the first thing we've done is cut a one-inch slice off of a two-and-a-half-inch foam ball. Go ahead and apply glue to the surface, put it on top of the topper, and let it dry. The next step is to make the balloons. And to do this, we've simplified things by using a one-and-a-half-inch pom-pom, a length of chenille stem wrapped around and twisted a couple of times to hold it. And that gives you your balloon. Oh, you don't even need any glue on it? No, just very, very simple. Terrific. 
go ahead and put all three balloons together and twist them in the middle so that you'll have a unit just like this. The next step is to glue one inch pom poms on the shoulder to create the arms. And then you can also glue the balloons into, onto the front of it. Now, your white glue will hold on all that plastic? Well, it will if it's pom poms, but on this particular part of it, you might want to use a hot glue gun. Because, and if you do, be certain that the adults use it rather than kids because they do get hot, but they stick real well. The next step is to make mittens. And you can make a very, very simple mitten pattern by just tracing out the shape onto a piece of white paper, cutting it out, and taping it to the felt. Then fold the felt in half and cut it out so that you get both mittens at once. Do the same thing for the foot pattern. And in describing this to the kids, I usually say it's a teardrop shape with the back cut off. And that will make the shoe. So we have two of those. And as you can see here in this sample, we've glued it to the bottom and also glued the mittens covering the chenille stem and over here on the right side. Also, you can decorate around the neck using a length of box pleat ribbon. This is a five inch length and if you don't have a box pleat ribbon you could substitute with some sort of uh, eyelet lace or something that would that would work. It's a wonderful pleat of green though. Yes it is. Very it's nice clowny. and bright. <laughs> yes. Then for the shoelaces on his shoes go ahead and tie a little bow in a five inch length of blue ribbon and glue it to his feet. Would I be permitted to just use some white crochet thread sure. or some, even some string? Sure, any substitutions. And this is the sort of project that's great to be able to use some of those sewing notions that you have. Remember all those little scraps we always mm -hmm. have left over? You could even put a pom-pom on there. Sure, make it more simple. I never can make bows out of those tiny ribbons. That's why I'm giving all these... <laughs> So well, that's true, <laughs> you know, and that's a good idea, too, because sometimes children have a little trouble. So if you want to, you can pre-tie the bows ahead of time and then pass no, them No, you out. can do that. I'm not about to. <laughs> <laughs> well, the next thing is to decorate the face. And with this face, we can take and use permanent magic markers on it, or you can cut them out of felt. And in describing the mouth shape for students, I usually say, go ahead and make a hot dog shape, only bent on the end so that it... Perfect, yes. It works just fine for the outer mouth. And when you cut it out, it'll look like this. You can bend a little red smile out of chenille stem and glue that on. And then you can cut little star shapes out of blue felt, glue that, a nose out of a half inch, and then add little tiny wiggle eyes to it so that when you're finished, the face will look just like this. Oh, that's like a, a work of art. It really <laughs> is. My it goodness. It can get as elaborate or as simple as you wish, that's depending on the age. That's a wonderful head of hair the kid has. Well, that's what we need to add next. And this happens to be a length of maxi loop that is glued onto one end and then pulled into a, a circle, a flattened circle. Is this sold by the yard? You can buy this by the yard in your craft stores, and if not, you can substitute with other types of chenille or yarn or something like that. You glue it to the, glue it around the head, and then this is also enjoyable because here's where you can decorate the suit with all different colors of pom-poms, just gluing them any which way, and you have your That's finished clown. Like that is as cute as it can be. You know what these would be darling for, too, if you had the time and the energy? Um, although it doesn't take a lot of energy, is to have those as party favors at a youngster's sure, birthday party. that would be good. Or it could even be part of the party, the kids making it as, you know, we're always looking for things oh, in addition right. to games. Yes, so. no, that is really cute. And it's just out of one of these uh, air freshener That's containers. That's right. Mm -hmm. And also, it's functional because it can still serve as a renews it adjustable air freshener. Oh, well, if you made them as party favors for the kids, they can take it home to their mother. That's right, and everybody's happy. <laughs> cute idea, just really nice. Thanks for sharing them with sure. us, Cindy. Well, that's it, the end of our videotape. And I hope you feel as I do. Oh, is it over already? All in all, it should be great fun. It has been for me. Hope it will be for you.